The Gospel of the Lord. A parish priest, very excited, interested, when he seen so many people coming, listening to his sermon, and one of the pre person came to him and said, Father, you quote so many uh, Bible quotations, and we are so backward in it. Why can't we have Bible class for all? And the parish priest thought, well, oh, he's asking for a Bible class. Next Sunday he announced. Shall we all have here in our parish Bible class once a week? And everybody said yes. Let me see how many of you want Bible class once a week? How many of you want Bible class once a week? Good. Now at least half of you have raised hands slowly like that this way. But the parish priest later on thought about it and then said, How many of you want to attend Bible class? How many of you want to attend Bible class? And at that time, only three hands were up. Another parish priest, very excited, said, I hope all of you will come. And he said, Oh, at least 70 people have raised hands. I better have on every Wednesday and Wednesday came, he was waiting 7 o'clock, 7.30, not one turned up. The parish priest had to learn his own scripture again. My dear friends, it's so nice to tell that we have to do this, we have to do that and finally it falls upon the person who is organizing it. You organize something, finally you have to bend your back and do all the work. It's interesting to see that Jesus quotes this parable of two sons. Why? Because talk, we all talk. Some of us have big mouth. I have a big mouth. You agree, no? Yes, I have a big mouth. And all of us have big mouth. We talk. And our talk is very cheap. Very cheap. Because today's gospel reading says, count your actions because your actions speak louder than words. That is necessary for all of us. That you have to keep behind your mind. Now, the attitude of the elders and the priests and those who were there around the crowd, Jesus had to tell them the new order. What is the new order? He wanted to create a new category of people. Because we know that God has a plan for all of us. And it is interesting to see in the scripture, when God calls some people to become prophet, to become disciple, to become his follower. You know, God makes the first call. And he knows that he is going to call you by name. And when, you, when he calls you, what is the first response you will have? Yes, like the scripture, we hear all the prophets. They say, no, no, I cannot do this, I am weak. Samuel said the same thing, Ezekiel said the same thing, Jeremiah said, no, I cannot. Moses also said, I cannot, I am a stammering fellow. How will I go and tell about you? So, the first step is God calling you. The second step is we exposing our weakness. Yes, I am like this. How will I do your work? Because we know God's work means my weakness will be exposed. Therefore, it is better to say, I am weak. But God then, afterwards, the next step, he says, No, I need you. You don't worry. I will empower you. So the third part, we see God empowering us. 
And when God empowers us, then the fourth step comes in. We commit ourselves. We are committed. We give up everything. And then we start doing work for God. And the fifth part is that I become his chosen one. You become his chosen one. So these four steps are there when God calls you for a specific purpose. But in the world we have three category of people. You know, three category of people because the first category of people is they will say, yes, 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 I will do it. But later on, they won't do it. In other words, the first category of people is yes and no category. They will say yes and afterwards no, I don't think. Can we believe those people? They are very decisive. They are like cat on the wall. They do not know whether we have to do it or not. And this type of people, we cannot rely and give some responsibility. Are that fellow will come and say yes, but later on not do it. And Jesus does not want such people for his kingdom. So he says, be careful that if you say yes and later on say no, then means you are a person of yes and no. In every aspect, let it be as a husband, let it be a wife, let it be children, let it be anybody, we become yes and no people. The second category of people are but people. They will say yes, but. In everything, they'll be butting. They'll say yes, but. They have big buts to but. And they will promise, oh yes, Father, we will do this. Oh yes, I will do this, darling, for you. But you know, I will do it on the first of, first week of the month. That time I'll have money. No, isn't it? We have to go for shopping. A month ending, but pocket is empty. We have to do this, but there's a but in everything. And such people will take the opportunity to say yes and later on, but that is where we cannot progress in life if there are too many buts. And we will make huge promises and after that, Father, you made that promise. But you know what happened. But you know what happened. So there are promises made, but comes in. So the second category of people are but people. The third category of people are yes means yes, no means no. They have their head on their shoulder. They are very firm in their decision. They are very reliable. You can trust on them. You can believe in them. If you give some responsibility, you can have a good nap. You will be sure that that person doesn't. And therefore you have such people who say yes, 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 and they will do it. When they say no, they stand by it. Why? Because they have gone through life. They have learned many things in their life. They have many experiences in their life. So much so that they are able to say, no, I think this we have to do. Or they will say, no, I think we should not do this. It's not possible. And that is how yes means yes, no means no. That's why Matthew's Gospel chapter 5 verse 36 says, Jesus said, say yes is yes, no is no. Now for his kingdom, Jesus brings in the fourth order which is Jesus' category. And in the Jesus' category, we see that he depends on the repented part of yours. You may say, no, Jesus, I can't do this. But later on, repent and then say, okay, I will do it. Not at this age, maybe after a particular time. Not now, but later on, you may say yes. So Jesus waits for that repenting part. And therefore, for him, this category is important. The category which says no, 
but later on realizes i made a mistake i should have i will now do it i'll put my foot down and i will complete my work for my family for my husband for my wife for my children for my parents this is exactly what jesus wants from us when he speaks about these two sons the first son said no but later on he went and did it the second son said yes 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 and later on did not now these two sons are not school going children so don't think that jesus was speaking about two sons who are going to school no these sons are grown up ones these sons who are totally matured in life in other words when jesus speaks about this parable he speaks about his vineyard his vineyard needs you his vineyard needs each one of us therefore he is telling go and do this work in my vineyard and what will be your reply you are a matured follower of christ you are a matured catholic and therefore you have to say yes and let that be yes but if you say no later on realize put your acts together walk the talk because you said yes and later on you are not going to do it jesus is going to ask you not in this age but when you go up there you said yes for many things what have you done now tell me give me an account of all the yeses that you did but here he wants us to make those no yes as our life is a very short life to live in this world there are many moments that we have said yeah no but now we can turn that into yes jesus wants to have a talk with you and he wants to walk with you and he wants to get that affirmative yes from you for he has called you you have exposed your weaknesses later on he empowers you then you will commit yourself to him and become a real follower of christ that is the reason why we hear in the first reading i will just read the first reading so that it helps us to know what it is hear o israel the house of israel is it not your ways that are just when a righteous man turns away from his sin righteousness and commits iniquity he will die for it so a righteous man living his life commits sin and he dies he will he shall die for it for the iniquity which he has committed he shall die again he speaks about when a wicked man turns away from the wickedness he has committed and does what is lawful and right he shall save his life so the entire sermon of mine comes to this point a righteous dies in sin i am righteous but if i die in sin all my life becomes meaningless but if i am wicked man but i turn my life into a righteous man man and die i will live with him amen let us all stand for the creed